بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise to Allah the gracious the most merciful for his sustenance for his guidance to all mankind and may his peace and blessings be upon all of his messengers in particular our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace upon him and his pure and immaculate progeny and family my brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh who are the shia people what is shiaism shia refers to a group of followers shia means followers and this term has been mentioned in the quran several times in reference to the followers of Ibrahim and the Prophet Moses, both. وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ And also in a reference to Prophet Noah. It means followers. And Shias are those who follow the teachings of the Holy Quran and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but through a specific channel the channel that has been designated by Allah and this channel is the family of the Prophet actually the first time the term Shia was mentioned in Islam it was by the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he referred to Ali and his friends as being his followers. There are several narrations in many traditions in the Sunni sources as well as the Shia sources. The Prophet when he saw Ali, the parable of Ali, this is what he said, the parable of Ali is like a tree in which I am the root, Ali is the branch, Hassan and Hussein are the fruits and the Shias are the leaves and this hadith has been mentioned by one of the most credible narrators and transmitters of hadith in Sunni Islam Ibn Hajar Ibn Hajar in his book Lisan al-Mizan another tradition by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding the term Shia he said when he saw Ali coming he said, Ya Ali, or he referred to him saying, this man and his Shias will indeed be the successful ones, humul faizun, on the day of judgment. And this is this hadith has been narrated by one of the most credible companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. And... <clears throat> So we know and we realize that the Prophet was the first one to mention the term Shia. In fact, to invent and come up with this term during his lifetime when he referred to Imam Ali and his followers in many occasions in different events. Hada wa Shi'atuhu, this man and his followers. The Shias, they choose to follow Ahlul Bayt because these are the instructions of the Quran and these are the instructions of Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Inni tarikun aw mukhallifun fikum al-thaqalain kitab Allah wa atrati ahl bayti. After my departure, I am leaving behind among you two weighty things. One, the book of God, the Holy Quran, and second, my progeny, my family, wa atrati ahl bayti. This term, wa atrati ahl bayti, has been mentioned in many authentic Sunni books such as Sahih Muslim, Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and Nisa'i, at tirmidhi ibn Majah and others. So Shias are the one who follow the Quran, the Prophet, and the family of the Prophet. Now Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him, the fifth Imam of the school of Ahlul Bayt, he has another way of defining Shiaism morally, moral and ethical and spiritual 
definition to Shiism. He says to one of his companions, he says, Ya Jabir, it's not enough for a person to call himself Shia, and then he expects complete salvation and success on the Day of Judgment. Ma Shi'atuna illa man wa ata'ah. In fact, the Shias of the Prophet and his household are the one who are pious. They fear God. They obey God. <clears throat> you would recognize them by only their humility, their submission to God, their honesty, their abundant praise of God, their fasting, their prayers, their goodness to their parents, attention to the poor, needy, debtors and orphans, and speaking, the Shias are the one who speak the truth, the recitation of the Quran, holding back their tongues except for good words and trustworthiness towards one's relatives in all affairs. These are the characteristics of the Shias. The Shias, they follow God, the Holy Quran, Prophet Muhammad, and after him, the nearest people to the Prophet who had been appointed by God and the Prophet, and those are Ahlul Bayt. And also, they have good qualities in their behavior, in their attitude, in their conduct, the way they conduct themselves, the way they behave, the way they reach out to others. They are excellent. They are the top ones. They follow the manners and the akhlaq of the Prophet. The leader of Ahlul Bayt is the Prophet and his household. They follow Imam Ali in his manners. They follow Lady Fatima al Zahra, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam al Sadiq, and other Imams. This is the meaning of the term Shia. Different narrations show that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was the first person to utter the term Shia and Shiaism in reference to those who were very close to Ali ibn Abi Talib. In several occasions, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family would see Imam Ali being surrounded by maybe two or three of his close and loyal friends, he would smile. He would say, Ya Ali, anta wa shi'atuka ala manabira min nur. On the Day of Judgment, you and those close and loyal friends, those intimate friends of you, are going to be with radiant faces on the Day of Judgment, surrounding me, ala manabira min nur, standing on pulpits, being visible. People can see you and can see your shining faces. The lights, lights shining from your faces on the Day of Judgment. So he was the one who invented this term and, if you will, established this term during his lifetime to distinguish Imam Ali and his true followers from the rest of the nation. So those were the elite, if you will. Those were the elite, the special forces who helped Islam during the time of the Prophet and who remained true to the path of the Prophet and his true Sunnah after the departure of the Prophet, peace be upon him. My brothers and sisters, it's no surprise to see that the Muslim community shifted away from the authentic teachings of the Prophet. And this was the case during the time of Moses, after his departure. The vast majority of the Israelites, Bani Israel, they shifted away from his teachings. Actually, they did during his own lifetime. When they came across idol worshippers in the Sinai Desert, Can you establish and build some idols for us as those people have some idols so we can worship them? He said to them, Indeed, Moses addressed his community by saying, Indeed, you are people of ignorance. So this happened during his lifetime and after his departure. People shifted away from his teachings. It happened again during the, the, the time and the life 
of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, during his lifetime, where some people treated him as divine, God or the Son of God, and after his ascension to heaven, where people started worshiping him, and 300 years after his ascension, almost three, three centuries after his ascension, the church, the church decided to declare Trinity as one of the most important tenets of the church's principles and teachings. And thus, officially, Jesus is considered either God or the Son of God. And Muslims are no exception to others before them, to the people before them, because this is exactly what the Prophet Muhammad mentioned in his hadith, that you're going to follow the story, the tradition, the path, the footsteps, the footsteps of those who are before you, step by step and inch by inch, you're going to follow them. And you're going to do exactly the same. And this is what happened after the departure of the Prophet. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ O Muslims, Prophet Muhammad is nothing but a messenger. Before him there were many messengers. Should he die or get killed in قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ You turn away, you turn back on your heels. Turning back on their heels, it means that they shifted away, they diverted from the sunnah of the Prophet, from the path of Islam. They were influenced by politics of the day. They were influenced by the power struggle of the day, by the ambition, political ambition, of some people who were around the Prophet and they had political ambition. They wanted to succeed the Prophet. They wanted to hold leadership at that time. And the vast majority of the people followed them. So the Ummah, it is very correct, it is very scientific, and it is very fair to say that the vast majority of the Ummah shifted away. And this is exactly the wording of the Quran. In qalabtum ala aqabikum, waman yanqalib ala aqibayhi falin yadurra allaha shay'a, wa sayyidzillahu shakirin. If someone wants to go back on his heel, turns away, away from the Prophet and his teachings, He's not doing any harm to his Lord. He's doing harm to his own self. And for those who remain steadfast on the path of the Prophet, on his authentic and true sunnah, God is going to re reward them abundantly. Shia are the one who remained on the path of the Prophet. Through peaceful means, Shia opted to struggle, but through peaceful means. The leadership was taken away from Imam Ali by force, by threat, by almost, almost a military coup d'etat in a place called Saqifat Bani Sa'idah in a place where they had an emergency meeting while the Prophet was still not buried, the top guys in Quraysh of the Muhajireen, they gathered there to form a new government, forgetting that 70 days before they paid allegiance to Imam Ali. بَخِنْ بَخِنْ لَكَ يَا عَلِي أَصْبَحْتَ مَوْلَاي وَمَوْلَا كُلِّ مُؤْمِنٍ وَمُؤْمِنًا they forgot that. They paid. Now they are trying to find another leader. Because according to, the, to them, Ali is still young. He's still 33 years old. And there are people who are much older than him. They deserve to be the caliphs and the successors. But the few people remained with Ali. They remained loyal to him. Maybe six or seven, no more than ten people. They stood with Ali. And... They braved all the challenges, but they stood fast. Those were the Shias. Those were the hardcore Shias. 
the first nucleus of the Shias who continued after that for so many centuries until today and until the Day of Judgment. Another name for the Shia Muslims today had been for a long time is the Ja'fari tradition, the Ja'fari school of thought. Why it is Ja'fari and how it is related to Shi'ism and what is the difference between them. I mentioned earlier that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the first, very first person during the Islamic era to utter the term Shi'as in reference to Imam Ali and his followers during the Prophet's lifetime. So the first establishment of this term Shi'ism came during the life of the Prophet. However, the term Shi'a has been mentioned during the time of Noah in the Quran in reference to the followers of Noah and Abraham and Moses. Now, of course, the Shi'as, they remained loyal to Imam Ali during the predicament of the Saqifah and the division and the dichotomy that took place. Many Muslims opted to follow the first Caliph, Abu Bakr. But the true Muslims who were well aware of the issue and they were well aware of the will of the Prophet and the will of the Quran and that God, through his Prophet, he wants Imam Ali to succeed the Prophet. Not only Imam Ali, but the 12 Caliphs from Bani Hashim, the Prophet himself asserted in many occasions, Al Khulafa'u min ba'di ithna ashr. In some narrations, Kulluhum min Quraysh. In other narrations, Kulluhum min Bani Hashim. Quraysh was the major tribe of Mecca, but within that major tribe, there were about 20 sub tribes. One of them was Bani Hashim. So the Prophet said, my successors are from the, this specific sub-branch of Bani Hashim. They're going to succeed me. So very few, the minority they chose, to remain steadfast and strong on that path. Though that path cost them a lot, a lot of persecution, a lot of suffering, a lot of killing, they lost their life. They lost their belonging. They lost everything they had. But this is the sacrifice we have to give. Quran teaches us that when the cause is worth it, you may give your soul for it. You may give your life. You, you may give your blood. You may give your money. Until the time of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq came, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq was born almost 70 years after the departure of his great-grandfather, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was born in Medina in year 83 Hijri. <clears throat> and at that time, Bani Umayyah, the dynasty of Umayyah, they clashed with Bani al-Abbas. Actually, Bani al-Abbas who are the descendants of Abbas, one of the uncles of the Prophet ﷺ, they had power struggle among them. Bani al-Abbas, they tried to depose Bani Umayyah and replace them. So they were busy fighting each other. There were huge power struggle among them. At that time, Imam al-Sadiq, who is the sixth Imam of the school of Ahl al-Bayt, he found a window of opportunity to formulate Islamic jurisprudence, Islamic fiqh, and Islamic theology according to the sunnah and the teachings of his great-grandfather, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He had some time of freedom, if you will, freedom to preach. So he started preaching Imam al-Sadiq in the mosque of the Prophet, because now the dictators are busy killing each other. They have no time to suppress the infallible imams. Because there was severe power struggle 
between the Umayyad dynasty and the Abbasid dynasty. And that era and that time was very important and critical to the Imam to propagate and disseminate the true message of Islam after a period of time, after so many years of not being able to preach neither him nor his forefathers, such as Imam al-Baqir or Imam Zain al-Abideen, now Imam al-Sadiq, he has this opportunity, this is the momentum, to preach the message of Ahlul Bayt. And therefore, when this message re-emerged during the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, it was attributed to him. Although Shi'ism is established first and foremost by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but later on after 60 or 70 years, it was formalized and crystallized by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And therefore the Shi'as were known after that as the Ja'faris or the Ja'fari school of thought, which is attributed to the sixth Imam. Imam al-Sadiq was able to educate people, to educate the scholars. Some of the scholars who studied under him were Abu Hanifa and Nu'man ibn Thabit, was Imam Malik. Both of them, they studied under the guidance and the instructions of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Al-Shafi'i and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, they were not the direct students of the Imam, but however, they still benefited from the knowledge of the Imam because they were the students of the students of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And Shi'ism started to flourish. At one point, there were 4,000 jurists, exegist, mufassir of the Quran, theologian, scholar, who were listening to the teachings and the instructions of Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam. They learned from him, they benefited from him. And therefore, from that time, Shi'ism became to be known and distinguished from other traditions by being called the Ja'fari school of thought. However, the others, like the Hanafi, the Maliki, the Shafi'i, the Hanbali, were patronized by the Abbasid government. They were given much freedom. They were propagated officially by the government through the help of the government, the support of the government, and therefore they became the majority. Because when the government has the media, has the money, has the political power, then it can preach any message. And sometimes, as we see in some countries in the Middle East, it can impose its message, its faith, its own version of religion on the masses through the media, through the school curriculum, through the mass media, through the mosques, through the judges and the scholars. And this is exactly what happened. And this is why you find that the Shias, the Ja'faris, were the minority, while other traditions became the majority due to the government support.